Lakshmi Tantra Chapter 9 The Exclusive Incarnations of Shakti Now, O Lord of Gods, hear from me about my exclusive incarnations, unaccompanied by Narayan as my spouse or partner. I am Goddess Narayani, ever cooperating in performing the functions of Narayana, who consists of Jnana, non-dual knowledge, Ananda, bliss, and Kriya, activity. And I too consist of knowledge, bliss, and activity. There is not a single place nor moment when it is possible for me to exist without him, or for him to exist without me. Serving some specific purpose, we exercise our supreme power to manifest ourselves in a form that may be regarded as normal, such as Dhruva, or even as supranormal, Nrishingavatar. When, on account of the austerities practiced by the world-destroying demons, Brahma and the other high gods were obliged to grant them excellent boons. Then, in order to please the gods, we, the two eternal ones, assumed different forms to meet the particular requirements of each occasion and roamed about to fulfill the purpose of the gods. Concealing my transcendental nature through my inscrutable power, Maya, I, through my divine capacity, descend to this earth to slay these destroyers. In the beginning, I, the holy goddess, manifested myself as the goddess called Mahalakshmi. Next, I became two by assuming the forms of Krishna and Brahmi, Mahakali and Mahavidya. These are my three supreme forms, classified by the three gunas. O Chakra, during the reign of Swayambhuva Manu, for the benefit of all worlds, I, Mahalakshmi, appeared as Mahisha Mardini. The elements of my Shakti, inherent in each god, combined to constitute my dazzlingly beautiful form. O King of Gods, the Shaktis belonging to the special weapons of each god turned into my weapons without undergoing change of form. Worshipped by the gods, I, in that form of Mahisha Mardini, instantly slew the demon Mahisha. Then the Mahishasura Mardini Stotram, the laudatory hymn addressed to the slayer of Mahisha, beginning with the words Devya Yaya, which fulfills every wish, was revealed to all the gods, including Indra and the sages. O king of the gods, Brahmanas skilled in the Vedas relate in detail Mahishamardini's origin, prowess in battle, and the eulogies addressed to her. He who praises, meditates upon, or even bows down to so powerful a goddess is rewarded with everlasting supremacy. You should realize that the Duratyaya, mysterious goddess identified with Hari's mystic slumber, Yoga Nidra, is myself, the eternal goddess in the form of Mahakali. When the two demons became overbearing because Vishnu, the god of gods, had granted them a boon, it was she, Yoganidra, who slew Madhu and Kaitaba. O Purandara, to praise me, the goddess Yoganidra, forever, the laudatory hymn starting with the word Vishveshvari, was revealed to Brahma. The inscrutable power of the mysterious goddess Mahakali 
who belongs to Vishnu, is such that when gratified by praise, she makes the devotee master of the movable and immovable beings in this world. The Brahma Vadins, who expound the Vedas, hold that constant reminders of this goddess's origin and exploits, accompanied by chanting of her praises, has a beneficial effect on all living beings. O Chakra, during the period of Tamasamanu, I, the Supreme Mahavidya, was Kaushiki, who sprang from the body of Gauri to slay all those notorious demons, including Shumba and Nishumba. Thereby I rescued the worlds and helped the gods. To help me fight the demons, my powers inherent in the bodies of the greatest of gods manifested themselves in diverse forms. By virtue of these powers, having slain the demon chieftains who deserved death, I drew back within myself all my infinitesimal particles. Whereafter I killed those two demons, Shumba and Nishumba. Then to all the gods led by Agni, the fire god, was revealed the very beautiful hymn praising me, known as the Eulogy of Narayani, Devi Mahatmyam, opening with the words, Devi Prapanar Tihare Prasida. O Lord of all gods, when worshipped with devotion, I, the goddess Kaushiki, fulfiller of many desires, bestow omniscience on the devotee. The ancient brahmanas, who are conversant with the Vedas and auxiliary sciences, pay homage to me in three ways, by reciting accounts of my origin, exploits in battle, and by extolling me. During the period of Vaivasvata Manu, these demons Shumba and Nishumba will be reborn, and, intoxicated by the granting of their boon, will torment the gods. I shall then be born as Sunanda, child of Yashoda, in the family of the cowherd Nanda, and, residing on the Vindhya, I shall slay them. Once more descending to earth in a terrible form, I shall kill the mighty demons of the Vipracitti line. And whilst devouring those terrifying demons of Vipracitti lineage, my teeth will become as red as the flowers of the pomegranate tree. Then all the gods and men on earth will propitiate me by calling me Raktadantika, the red-toothed one, forever. O Chakra, during that period in the 40th era, drought and scarcity of water will prevail all over the earth for 100 years. When the sages then remember me, I shall appear on earth as an unborn deity and shall cast a glance on those sages with my hundred eyes. O Chakra, men will then extol me as the hundred-eyed goddess, and I shall nourish the whole world with wonderful life-sustaining plants issuing from my own body and filled with avishtai, my essence. Then, Vasava, the gods will worship me as Shakambhari, the embodiment of vegetation. Whereupon I shall indeed slay the great demon called Durga and gain renown as the goddess Durga. O Chakra, he who praises, meditates on, worships and salutes Shakambhari, obtains quick and permanent relief of his desires for food and drink. During the fiftieth era containing four ages, when supplicated by the sages, I shall appear on the Himalayas in a beautiful and at the same time ferocious form. And to protect the sages, I shall devour the demons. 
Then all the sages with heads humbly bowed will eagerly praise me, the terrible but protective deity, with the hymn that starts with the words, Bhime Devi Prasida, etc. During the 60th era, there will be one demon called Aruna, who will do much harm to men and sages. Then I shall appear in a form incorporating innumerable bees, and I shall slay the mighty demon and rescue the three worlds. From then on, people will praise me forever and address me as Brahmari. Thus, on each occasion that the demons disturb the earth, I shall descend to kill these powerful asuras. O Chakra, here I have given you a brief account of my mysterious, exclusive, and fearless incarnations. Ranking highest among these is said to be the immutable, mighty, illustrious, and supreme goddess Mahalakshmi, Prakriti, the Source. In praise of her, the holy hymn Namo Devya, Devi Shuktam, ensuring the fulfillment of wishes, was revealed to all the gods headed by Brahma. Here in this world, he who daily worships me, who am this goddess, by reciting these laudatory hymns, overcomes all difficulties and attains great prosperity. O virtuous Chakra, formerly during the period of Svarochi Samanu, Vasishta told the noble-souled king Surata all about my births and exploits when I manifested myself as the pure Mahalakshmi and recited the hymn describing my divine power, etc. Ever reverent and devoted to me, Vasishta, whose mind was filled with my descents, exploits, and praise of me, chanted the Devi Suktam to humble and dispirited Samadhi of Vaishya descent. He who has learnt about my avatars from a Brahmana, after dispelling all illusion, obtains true knowledge, gains prosperity, and succeeds in destroying all effects of evil, and, assisted by me, achieves good fortune and fame. Although these are my exclusive appearances, yet without Vishnu I have no separate existence. Hence, in my manifestations, he exists as myself. The reason for this is that we are inseparable and are inherent in each other. The Supreme God of Gods ever abides in me, and I, the ever-existent, in Him. Thus, Chakra, I have briefly revealed to you my incarnations, along with their modalities, which appear within the five sheaths other than the pure sheath. In the Absolute and its natural state manifested in the pure sheath, the inseparable existence of myself and Vishnu must also be viewed in the same light. Discerning that in my generally accepted appearances, my nature consists of a combination of various natures, and worshipping me in diverse ways, the aspirant escapes the misery caused by his deeds and attains madbhavam, my own state of existence. <laughs>